First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, my girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Hey, you guys. Welcome back. Uh, we just watched. Welcome back. Episode two, Truth Doesn't Make a Noise. <gasps> what a great it's episode. so good. Really? I loved this episode. I loved this episode. Like, y- y'all, I really feel like this might be, to date anyway, uh, this is like a top, like, I don't know. Top is this five. like a top two? Top Ooh, five? Top two. It, hey. I don't know. I get yeah. a little hyperbolic. I get I get a little excited. You got to rein me in. Well, listen, you're also. I'm in top 10 territory for sure. Yeah. Listen, okay. just to call it all out, Sophia's sick. Sophia and Joy have been oh. traveling all over the freaking <laughs> planet, working like crazy. <laughs> I'm in the midst of two renovations. This is the <sighs> highlight of my week when I get to just <sighs> sit down for two hours with you guys. Um, it's so nice. But yeah, I, it, juggling I it. all the things is a lot. Mm-hmm. So what are you juggling right now? Walk me through it. You were getting like blood drawn yesterday. Oh man, <laughs> my morning yesterday was so crazy. We're doing this really big episode and it's so good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like we're do- we're on episode five. So like oh, you yeah. guys know, season one, episode five, it's like all these things are happening. And this incredible director, Kate Wood, is here with us, and she's amazing. And, like, she directs pilots all the time, and we couldn't believe we got her to come work on our Mm -hmm. show. We're so pumped. That's a good name, Kate Wood. She's fabulous, and she's from Australia, and she'll come into set and just be like, okay, darling. Kate Wood. And I'm just like. Ah, it's Kate Wood. (laughs) Say it again, Joy. (laughs) Kate Wood. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You're good at that. I love it. You're really good at that. Um, yeah, she, she's like the kind of person who comes over to you and calls you darling and squeezes your shoulder and you're just like, stay with me. Um, but yeah, we had the, we're, we were doing splits yesterday. So I went to work at 10 a.m. Um, and had a Zoom with my, <laughs> this is really fun, with my wedding planners yes. and my sweet fiance. And I'm like riding to work, like combing out my wet hair, just being an animal. And these, these women are so sweet on the Zoom. And I'm like, hey guys, sorry. You know, I don't have like a bra on. I'm in the sweatpants I slept in, but no, how are you? Set the expectation <laughs> real low. You want them to think you're yeah. a handful. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and I get to set and because I've been sick, they've been trying to get me into the doctor, but I can't go to the doctor because we work all the time. And so this, a doctor sent a person, a phlebotomist. I love that word, by Ooh. the way. Phlebotomist. I do too. It's so Doesn't good. Doesn't that feel so yeah. good to say? I want to play a phlebotomist yes. on TV. How about phlebotomist. that? Phlebotomist. <laughs> yeah, I'm really into it. Maybe it's because I love Dexter so much. I don't know. But um, <clears throat> but this lovely person comes to like draw draw my blood. But I get into my trailer and I'm on the Zoom with the wedding players and I lay down because I'm like, if I if I sit up while you draw my blood, I'll faint. So I just lay down. And the nurse like follows me to the ground, <laughs> takes my blood. I'm still on the Zoom and everyone's just kind of like, what is your life? Yeah. And then I went from from the blood draw <laughs> into the hair and makeup trailer and I to get ready and like run lines while, you know, finishing the Zoom. And I just was like, you know what? This is a... Uh, this is what we do. We it's juggle. a lot. Yeah. We're in a circus. A hundred percent. We totally are. And I are. say that like, you know, with the caveat, and I know we all say this, it's like, it's organized chaos. It's insane and it's delicious and we love it. And we're all just like, I don't know. I look around every day being up here and I'm just so grateful. The only thing I could ask for, the only thing more I would want is to get you two lunatics up here to play with me. Well, Yeah. Yeah. Then I'd be like, I've won the lottery. Everything's good. Girl, I've got winter coats. We can come <laughs> to know. Canada. We can just drive <laughs> up from the farm. Wrap ourselves in Canada goose. We'll put Joy on a plane and we'll do it. That's it. Joy, you've been all over the place too. Are you home for a I little bit? Yep. What are I you can't doing? figure out what yep. city you're in every day <laughs> no. for the last three Last time weeks. I saw you were in like, Nashville. You're it's been a lot. It's been yeah. a lot of traveling that was surprising for me because, um, I, you know, as, as it is in the circus, you never know when you're going to get called to get on a plane all of a sudden. Yeah. So, yeah, I was um, I got a job in Charleston on a great movie, a Miramax <gasps> movie with um, Paul Bettany mm-hmm. and Carmen Jogo and just some a really amazing uh. group of people. And it was a, it was a small group. It was a small cast. And we were all kind of in one location the whole time. So it was nice. To, I wasn't just there for a couple scenes and then left. I really got to be there for 
um, four weeks and just get mm. to know everybody and spend time. And it felt great. They were keeping it small because of for COVID restrictions and just yeah. making sure everybody would stay safe. And um, so did it feel really intimate? So that was a blast. It did. Yeah. We were all just kind of in a house for three weeks, three, four weeks. I love oh, it. That's so cool. I also feel like I have to throw us all under the bus a little bit because as soon as you said Paul Bettany, ah! we all leaned in. <laughs> we all were like, oh my God. I just, I have to just be honest with, with our, with our, with our queendom fandom that we really all, we were like texting Joy being like, how is he? Is How's he that? so handsome? Listen, is he so nice? You guys, <laughs> Joy, I, he is, he's all those things. One of the most yeah. embarrassing nights of my life was with Paul Bettany because we were doing Secret Life of Bees. What happened? Secret Life of Bees. He's playing my abusive husband, but like oh. we had to shoot all this lovey-dovey stuff before. Those scenes were so heartbreaking. And we're like kissing on steps and it's all cute. And he's like such a gentleman, but also like really fun. And on the drive yeah. home that night, I'm just making small, small talk in the van and we're driving on this old country road and our van driver hits a deer and just <gasps> no. van, it's like three o'clock in the morning <gasps> and it's what? chaos and it's a nightmare. And I was pretty sure he was like, I'm never coming back to this place again. These people are insane. Oh my God. But he's a gentleman. I didn't know you guys had worked together. I didn't put two and two together. Well, that's why my eyes lit um, up because yeah, he, he really is he a was doll. so great. Mm. It's a movie that he actually co-wrote with a friend of his, uh, Dana Brown and, um, and he, we had Mark Waters directing and it was just so cool. Yeah. It was wow. a really cool the group. And Carmen that you showed was awesome us. too. I just love her. She's so creative. You look like a babe in this movie. Oh my God. <laughs> Your hair babe. is so good super in that movie. Super fun. Super yeah. fun. Yeah. And then after, I mean, we love Charleston. We had a great time and then went to, um, yeah, went to Nashville for a week to stay with some close friends. And also I had some meetings with. Uh, labels and write music musicians and writers and just putting together this uh, upcoming album that I'm yeah. planning. And did we uh, see that you were I'm hanging out with then... a friend of the show? Uh -huh. Did you go see a friend of ours? A friend of ours. Wait, I sent you a photo, but my brain is dead right now. What Jimmy? Who send you? Who's Jimmy Allen. Oh my gosh, Jimmy, Jimmy, yes. I had dinner with Jimmy. It was amazing. Sorry, I was thinking somebody from our cast. I was like, I don't think I saw anyone from They're our They're tricking cast. me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had dinner with Jimmy and his beautiful wife, Alexis, and um, their kids. And they were lovely. They had, had me and Maria over and oh, um, awesome. we ordered a feast. And we just sat and chatted. And it was really fun. He's really a big fan. I'm such a huge fan of his, too. It was super cool. It's been fun. I've been having a fun couple of months, I have to say. All I'm doing is taking care of all the stuff that I didn't do for the last year. Like, Jeff and I left the farm last October to go film The Walking Dead. And then we yeah. have just been on the road, you know, either in North Carolina yeah. or in Georgia. And so all this yeah. stuff accumulated here. And thankfully, we had really awesome people to, you know, take care of the animals. But there's just stuff that only you know how to do. And now yep. I'm in the thick of major renovations. I've got really witchy wallpaper up in my kitchen now. Oh, and that's all I care love about. That wallpaper. Ooh, I want to see it. Oh, wait, you showed it to us. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes you just have to like stop what you're doing and take care of the nest so that you can then yeah. go out into the world yeah. and like do all the stuff. But yeah, we've got a ton of production stuff happening. And all I want to do is wallpaper. I stayed up till that's so how I feel. <laughs> I stayed that's up. How I feel. Literally, we've got this very, very ugly stone fireplace. It was not built by a stonemason. It was just like somebody was like, I'm gonna put these rocks on a wall. And I <laughs> I concreted it last night. I stayed up till like midnight. I'm like, I'm sick of looking at this thing. I love that. We're so similar. I mean, that's, that's how my kitchen started. I was like, I got a can of green paint from my garage and I was started painting a cabinet. I was like, this will work. <laughs> you know, a week yeah. and a half later, I'm still <laughs> on the ground with a spray Bye. gun painting my cabinets. I love um, that. But it's great to be back. Uh, I go to New Jersey for a convention in a few days, so it'll be nice to go back home for a little while. And, uh, and then I'm here for Christmas. So it's, it's just that time yeah. of year when everything is so... <sighs> Jam packed, and your email yeah. inbox is blowing up, and your text messages are blowing up, and um, we're having a Christmas party here, and lots to plan for that. So yeah. I, it's it's just busy, busy. I got home from this like weird, crazy day at four a.m. I, I mean, I guess technically today, and I was on Pinterest for an hour. <laughs> I was like, "This is how I'm going to unwind." We're monsters. I'm going to categorize. Oh, yeah. man. Let's get into lustfactor.com. No, I want to bury it. 
No, I don't. <laughs> I definitely Guys. don't. We have such right. good stuff with the party, but let's get into the CD yeah. aspect of, of this episode because it actually was pretty <sighs> funny. Um. I, I, you know what I'm going to say? And Hillary, you said this early. Mm-hmm. You were like, you know, those people who've, who've done great acting with killer scripts, like I dare you to do our material. You and I yeah. somehow, I think we deserve like a Girl Scout patch because yeah. you and I somehow made the creepiest storyline feel very cute yeah. between two Bubbling. friends cute i dare kate winslet to do this <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> i would love to see come kate on jody foster impress yeah. me <laughs> just try you just take a picture of her ass for lust factor and make it look not a salty did you have to had they had to take that photo <sighs> for props yeah so here's what i tried to do <sighs> is i tried to unsexy every element. If you right. notice, like my posture in this episode is incredibly slouchy. And then when I, they had to take the ass shot, I tried to make my legs all like, you know, not no, you did cute. the giraffe stance. Yeah, I looked like Big Bird. It was you a know? total giraffe. <laughs> it's not cute. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, we're going to take this picture in the shower. And I'm like, I know how to make this ugly. I'm going to put this shower cap on. <laughs> this <has> been great. <laughs> um, if you fight sexy at every turn, Ultimately, you'll end up with something adorable. It becomes cute. You know yeah. what I think you end up yeah. with is comedy. Oh, and well wah, done wah. on you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're a smart cookie. Well, listen, yeah. th- like, let's talk about the dating scene, though, in Wilmington, because there was not a lustfactor.com. There wasn't one. We were all no. very available women for like five minutes. Uh, there was- Hill, did you actually do yeah. a dating site? Like, did you? Okay. You did. You guys. It wasn't oh until God. later talk seasons. About it. But... I was single for like, I don't know what, summer season, what season all of season six for sure. Um, yeah. And my best friend, Tori, who lived in Raleigh. So Tori would like come and hang out with us all the time in town. We decided to sign up for Match.com on New Year's Eve. And we were like, let's just do it. Let's just do it together. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. And so Wilmington was like a college town, but also like, kind of a military town and it was like it was an odd bag of dudes you never knew what you were gonna get and i get on match.com and every single dude i talk to is a pilot and he happens to be flying out that night and it's the only night he can see you and he's gonna be gone but he just really wants to meet you that night so Uh, i didn't yeah i didn't really end up dating anybody for match.com however i was living alone and the uncomfortable thing is that a number of my neighbors matched with me. And then they no. just like walk by the house. And on top <gasps> of that, one of our crew members matched with me. No! It was very <gasps> uncomfortable. You have to tell us who oh, it was. No. I'll tell you later. No! You guys, it oh was one of those God. where they're like, should we? And I'm like, definitely no. not. No. I mean, I feel like I need to paint a picture for our listeners. <laughs> it was so bad. Of the dating scene in Wilmington. Yeah. Because it has mystified In 2004. People. Yeah, in 2004, it has mystified a lot of people. They're like, why are you guys just kissing each other? And I'm like, you don't get it. You don't understand. <laughs> they, people are always like, why was that show like such an actual high school? And I'm like, well, because Wilmington has two groups of people. Mm-hmm. There's all of the UNCW students yeah. who are 18 to 21. Yes. And we mm-hmm. are now... 21 but on television so we, you know we're we're pretty exciting uh i don't know commodities to the college kids so immediately we're we like, can we buy beers avoid the college we got to avoid the colleges yeah. but also kind of too old too mature to date well that's it guys that were in that 21 year old bracket in that college town because we had our shit together we had our lives going we had our 401ks, together it's not like a normal guys. 21 year old yeah. like we had jobs <laughs> And yeah. we weren't like gonna go to someone's, you know, Sigma Chi party. Although that would have been then, fun. No one invited honestly, me. Honestly, that would have been fun. I'd have gone. You know what we should have done <laughs> is before the show premiered, we should have crashed some frat parties. Aww. We really, we 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 missed mm-hmm. it. But as I digress, the other available quote largest pool of men in Wilmington <laughs> are retirees oh, who live man. on golf courses. I'm telling and you, I was you're super not wrong. Not down to date somebody's grandfather. So I was, <laughs> I, I, you had, you could have had at it. Yeah. 
But yeah, this is basically why we all just kissed uh, each other. <laughs> I kept being like, I'm like, isn't there like a hot professor in town? Or, no. you know, like. There was a hot professor in town and he was married to an equally hot academic. And I was like, well, I could we all have dinner and you could teach me about how you met? I don't know. Um, yeah, there, there really was. There was just a, a gap. Well, lustfactor.com. So I understand match.com. Yeah, it could have it could have done wonders for all of us had it really existed. I also don't understand how you <laughs> uploaded Polaroid pictures to the internet in 2000 what was that? No, I was Scanners? uploading photos from the Canon Elf. Oh, is that what your little phone was? From the little power shot and then I'd put it in the card reader. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, what's so fun watching that old technology. It really it's was insane. fun seeing all that. It's so insane. <laughs> You guys, let's talk about that opening. Those shots were so beautiful. The like twisting shots, the upside down, the transitions of faces looking at each other in different places. I loved that. Yeah. Was this the first episode he directed? I don't know. For those of you at home, Billy Dixon was our director of photography. Um, and he had done Ally McBeal. Lamps. He'd put a lot of lamps. A lot of lamps. He did a lot of great work. Sorry, I don't mean to reduce him to just the lamps. <laughs> you can also blame art department for some of the lamps. You know what I mean? It yeah, went, that's it was, true. It was that's a true. That's team true. sport. No, Billy has an illustrious career. Um, and he, yes, he's done a lot of great work. But this may have been the first time he directed in front of the, uh, sorry, be behind the actual camera, not just setting up lighting and, and mm -hmm. stuff. So um, I thought he did a great job. Oh, I loved yeah. all the transitions and he was so creative. This, like the CD going into the case, going into the round um, the basketball, basketball hoop, hoop mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and that shot of, of Dan and Deb in the hospital room <gasps> yeah. with the cityscape and he coming, you in know, reflection. shooting through the glass with the reflection, really, really creative stuff. But that's such yeah. a smart way for us to not be in an actual city, use a screen, like a printed screen and just use the reflection mm -hmm. of it in the gra glass because it makes it look totally real and you don't have to travel yeah. to Raleigh or Charlotte to get that shot. You know, it's such yeah. a smart use of your stage. Yeah, um, you can build your hospital room on a stage and make it look like it's outside in a downtown area. And never leave the compound ever, ever. They never, <laughs> want, they never wanted to leave the compound. You know what? You know what stuck out to me, speaking of the tech that we thought was cool? Who thought any of us ever texted like excellent x c l n t like you know or great Gr like g r eight yeah. oh my god i was like Haley would never she's a tutor she would know <laughs> that was definitely a grown-up like how do the kids talk the kids right. talk like this and then i realized i think they did it to to get the bill joke when you call lucas bill and then you're like you know brother-in-law which i thought was so oh yeah cute there was something about that setting mm -hmm. that, that wasn't the parking lot we normally shot in. No. And they put like those big banners on the chain link fences and you could see kids playing like sports on the it field. It felt in the like back. a high school. It felt like a real high school. This episode seems like that. And the party episode, it gave me like all the cult classics of our time, like can't hardly wait. And, <sighs> and, it. and, um, what was the uh, 10 she's things I hate that. about you? And she's all oh, that. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, I loved it so much. This episode felt like that to me. Well, and it also was big me core too. five energy in this episode. Yeah. That scene in the parking lot where it's the five of us, there were not a lot of scenes. I wish it would longer. I know, me too. I do too. That gave me like big time warm fuzzies to just see us all together and know that like we just come back from hiatus. This was episode two. Like we're still riding high on like everyone still got a tan from the summer. <laughs> and yeah. it, those, those scenes felt really good to be together. You know, yeah. because we knew at that point that we were working on something that had collected an audience and mm -hmm. that we were making a really fun episode. And we also knew that the Nathan and Haley bomb had dropped and was like blowing people's minds. And so it just was really fun to yeah. play into that. What was the feedback yeah. you got, Joy, as like the wedding stuff un mm -hmm. unfurled? I well, I think it was still a lot of the same uh, a lot of the same stuff we talked about before, which is what kind of an impact is this going to have on, you know, young, young people who are falling in love at that age? Um, so, and that was still in the era of message boards as uh, <sighs> brutal, like an IMs instant messages when the guy says, <laughs> I am me sometime. 
<laughs> so funny. But yeah, so there were message boards. And um, I, I so I think that was sort of the chatter at the time. Um, but I, rem- I don't remember in terms of feedback of specifically Nathan and Haley being m- married young. I know it was it was a little hot topic in s- some magazine blurbs at the time, yeah. you know, p- things that were like, oh, things that are happening on big, big news in TV yeah. land and different things. Um, but I do remember shooting the party scene because it was our, that was our first time at Trick. Oh. We, we got that building and I didn't remember when we were watching the episode, I didn't remember that that came to be through this, through Lucas and the scene oh. with you guys. I had never seen that before. My jaw dropped. I was I loved so that. shocked. Yeah. How do we forget yeah. that? <laughs> We were like, Lucas found Trick. Like, what? Totally. I always thought it was Peyton. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, no, I thought it was Peyton too. I guess he gets credit. Thanks, well, Lucas. Yeah. You know what? In in your defense, it's not Trick yet. It's just a warehouse party. It's I would a say warehouse. that's true. Out it's of, probably your idea. It's a rave right now. Um, <laughs> out of all of the sets that we filmed in, I mm. have the strongest emotional connection to Trick. And yeah. so mm. it was really exciting to see it. Did you guys know that the trick building is in blue velvet? <gasps> really? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a legendary spot in Wilmington. Um, I just loved that building. Cool. I loved the parking lot. I loved that it was kind of mm. seedy right there on the train tracks on the edge of town. Yeah. 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 There's a bar That's next right. to it now where my buddy Skylar works, satellite, you know, like it's I love that bar. It's a hangout, man. And yeah. the fact yeah. that our convention friends, friends with benefit, do their conventions out of that space and we get to go back and visit there means a lot. Um, so awesome. It's so special. Walking up that inner stairwell, mm-hmm. like when we did our last convention there, yeah. I was so like, many memories. and like walking up there, holding your hand, I was like, oh my God, 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 oh my God. <laughs> like I felt like I should be it's, back in that pink top. Oh my God, the best top ever. On. Yeah. <gasps> Why didn't I keep you that You had top? great outfits in this episode. Yeah. I really liked it. The purple I didn't top. Love- yeah, you looked so cute. <laughs> the, they- the party though, this party was so, I like- I, it's so retro. I want to throw another one of these parties, like do a, some sort of theme. Nathan and Haley. Their anniversary party? Their anniversary <gasps> party. Joy, you oh said gosh. that you remember that moment of walking up the stairs, of that sense memory. I I do. I, I do. And I know that I have a million memories of walking up those stairs, but mm. that one in particular, I don't necessarily remember all the details, but I... It's weird watching it. It's a convert, like my, my, sorry, my brain and um, the image that I'm seeing on screen and the feeling that I had in my body when I was in that, you know, finally converge and connect. Uh, And so I remembered standing there with everybody shooting off their confetti, little mini (laughs) handheld confetti cannons and silly string um, and seeing all those faces and the smell of the place. uh, And Mm. yeah, I just, I just remembered that moment, I, I could feel it again. It was really cool. Do you guys remember, mm. I don't know why we didn't just like tent the building, but for whatever reason, like when we would film there, it would be from like six o'clock at night to six o'clock in the morning. And we essentially had like slumber parties there and we'd leave trick as the sun yeah. was coming up and like going down those yeah. real rickety stairs, you know, six o'clock yeah. in the morning. That yeah. green room in the back, that green oh, room off yeah. to the side with a co- couple of couches. And like, if you could get to that couch before anybody else did, <laughs> oh. you got to take a nap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise you were stuck with your cast chair. I just remember craft service being set up in the downstairs of trick and like it being yep. freezing in there and drinking gallons oh. and gallons of coffee in that place. Yep. It, Yes. I loved it. What were your favorite so sets? I that too. I mean, Trick for mm. sure. And then I will yeah. say, you know, I had such an attachment to Karen's Cafe mm. because Karen's became Closeover Bros. I loved the river court, but you mm-hmm. never knew what you were going to get. And it wasn't easy to move around because of the gravel around the trailers and the mud and <laughs> the mosquitoes and yeah. the cold. So I loved the location as a visually, I loved it, but yeah. you know what I did? Like I liked whenever we shot outside downtown walking around in the streets. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say that front and market. Yeah. Like whenever we got to do yeah. stuff at those little shops yeah. or down by the loved water, it. I always loved that. And yeah. then we could always run into edge of urge. Well, that's like, it. During our lunch break, we just lunch. Totally. <laughs> go to edge of urge. 
<laughs> We'd like go to Phoenix and get a hummus plate. I love it. <sighs> oh my God. Phoenix. Caprice. Oh my God. Um, uh, yes. Such a good I loved time. it. But you know, the thing that was great about Trick too is that you always kind of knew what you were going to get because they had... They figure eventually they figured out the temperature situation. So they had AC <laughs> pumping into the building on hot days and they had heat coming in on the cold like days. Like season and, five. And even on, yeah, and on the cold days, actually, you pack enough people in there, you just shut the doors and you don't have to turn anything on. Everybody just body heat warms up the whole place. Wait, whose body heat were you absorbing, Joy? <laughs> oh, I was hey, always cold. Wouldn't you like oh. to know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess Trick was probably my favorite too. I, yeah. I really enjoyed being there. We just we have such special memories there, and I don't know. Like you were saying, that that feeling of your memory, and it's like your memory comes out of the back of your head, and your heart is swelling yeah. up, and there, it's like all right here. It's very emotional. Yeah, and um, so good. I, I don't know the seeing how it started is so sweet. We have to talk about. The fake cough. Because oh trick <laughs> trick begins with this amazing Brooke and Peyton joke and the callback to the fake cough at the party. <coughs> <laughs> that killed me, you guys. I loved it. <laughs> I, so cute. We talked about how I really like a Brooke and Peyton two on one. And we do it throughout mm-hmm. the course of the, the show. You know, where yeah. Yeah. You, you clearly see the footing of this friendship. It's like, okay. Like, we're on one side, you're on the other. Lucas is definitely on the other side of this. I yeah. Oh, he's so out of his element yeah. with you two. Oh, and he's not even wearing real shoes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the flip-flops were killing me. I know. Oh, my God. But by the way, I remember teasing Chad about flip-flops in real life. Like, bro, you're on a film set. You got to wear real shoes. They drop shit all the time, you know? Um, but yeah. back then, like, flip-flops were cool. Remember everybody had, like— Rainbows. Oh, yeah. Especially in a beach town. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Big deal. Huge. Um, so I love that the only thing we could think of to get out of this letter-burning conversation with Lucas was a fake call. Um, <laughs> Peyton's not a clever girl. No, but it, it, no, no, I disagree. I love it. It's such a funny, it's such a classic comedic device. And, and you get with no exposition that it's a joke between the two of them. And it's so funny to me that it's like, that's the thing you did or you know, the fake cough. And then so, so when Brooke cute. uses it on Peyton at the end. You're just like, Oh man, it ki- it cute. just killed me. Like but it. how awkward, you know, it's like they call him the nameless one earlier yeah. in the it's episode. It's like Voldemort. <laughs> Has he done? So it? Weird. Yeah, what's he done really? That's that bad. I, I feel like he's apologized 300 times. How does he know that you didn't read the letter? Well, he doesn't know till the end, but like... Just because we're being so awkward about it. Yeah. I think he can just see that we're like, yeah, no, the letter was fine. And he's it like... fine. No, but even asking the question in the first place, like, why would he know to... Like, what was it that was giving it away that he went, you guys didn't read the letter? We didn't cry, Joy. We didn't cry because his words no. moved our hearts. <laughs> 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 you guys want to talk about Deb and Dan? Yes. Oh, man. Wow. They are projecting. Oh, yeah, big time. They are just projecting onto Nathan and Haley so much. And God, it Deb is breaks young, my sure. heart. Well, I guess Dan is too. For our listeners, when we watch the show together, we're all in different places and, you know, we all hit play at the same time. So if you miss something, it's kind of hard to be like, okay, everybody stop. Let me rewind. Let me watch it again. You just, you know, just keep going. So I missed, I don't know. My brain was distracted. What was the doctor saying about Dan? Why is he suddenly nice? What happened? Girl, he had a heart attack. I mean, like. It wasn't like some sort of brain. I feel like he was trying to say there's some, something happened where now he's like, can't remember. He's got some kind of amnesia or he's got some kind of. Something. It's teen drama doctor talk. Sophia plays a doctor on TV. Tell us so. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you. what The way I took it, and I thought it was a little unclear as well, but I, I thought Deb was basically like, what is going on with him? And he was saying, well, his disposition is positive and, 
whatever. And, you know, he was saying all these words you've never heard Dan Scott described as so much to the point that I can't remember what they were and I didn't put them on my notes, but basically <laughs> saying like, he's empathetic and, and happy. And, and she's just is like, what? Like, is this going to last? <laughs> um, you know, everyone is like, did he have a stroke? Like, we're very confused. I'm sort of confused. And wh- even that, but like now that hearing Whitey was like trying to get Keith to go back and try and reconcile again that was so out of character i didn't understand that part i don't understand why doesn't everybody just tell dan to screw go screw himself and leave leave everybody alone i love feisty joy yeah joy is (laughs) joy you have had it up to your eyeballs with toxic relationships and you are like out in the world with a (laughs) flamethrower just like take it down get out I, (laughs) i love it you're so over it the Dan of it all. Like we've seen Dan drinking whiskey out of his glass in every episode ever. And in this episode, he's like eating hospital jello, you know, like I loved it's, it. every single choice was to kind of emasculate and um, soften. Yeah. Yeah. To like defang him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, even seeing him in the hospital gown at the beginning, we talked about was like a choice because yeah. he's really vulnerable and like, yeah. Um, I like seeing Dan on his heels, but I also know it's bullshit because the second Deb comes in and is crying, he's like, baby, we got this. We're going to get called it together. You yes. called it. You said in the early part of the episode, you said he's giving me major Anakin Skywalker vibes Huge. before he goes dark. Huge. And then when and when he's holding Deb and he says, we'll get our son back. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. like I'm just hearing like, yeah. Luke, you know, Nathan, like, Luke, I'm so your dark. father. I am your father. <laughs> he's Anakin Skywalker for yeah. sure. Oh, Joy called it when Keith goes to visit Karen because Joy's like, this energy is different. Um, mm. Yeah. There was some new chemistry there. New chemistry. Yeah. Maybe it was like, maybe it was the fact that Keith had allowed himself to really like, well, not that he's not slept with anybody else in the last 30 years, but or I guess it was 15 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But there was something about it seemed like maybe pheromones leaving town. Yeah. Just taking a stand. Yeah. Suddenly he feels a little more free and he's not quite so puppy doggish with Karen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is much more appealing. And she, mm-hmm. and I loved those shots. Again, Billy Dixon with the great directing of shooting Karen low beneath, uh, when you're over um, Keith's shoulder looking down at Karen. And then when you're behind Karen's shoulder looking up at Keith and you can yeah. see the the that sort difference. of tall masculine vibe from him and that sh- small feminine vibe from her. And it, it was just, it was a nice, it was this quick scene, but it was nice. It was flirty. Well, it was interesting. It was flirty. And it's a really interesting thing to be able to observe because you realize that, you know, they always made us all stand on apple boxes. Yeah. So it would be easy to shoot right. around like we were all the same height. And none of us are as tall as those boys. We actually had very tall boys on our show. That's rare. Very yeah. tall. Super boys. rare it's for rare. actors. It yeah. is really rare. Yeah. So there there was something really interesting in that in that dynamic. Like I want to look little. I always look like Lurch. I'm always <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to look little. Damn it. Someone give the boy Damn an it. apple box. Those Bambi eyes. <laughs> it's just interesting because Keith, in a way, has set a boundary. Mm. You know, he finally established a boundary between him and Karen, and Karen sees him differently now. Yeah. And then, speaking of boundaries and flamethrowers, Haley sets a gauntlet of a boundary Ooh. down with Deb, and I like it. Do you remember yeah. filming that scene? I do in a... I do in a way. Uh, I don't remember the, the exactly any of the behind the scenes stuff, but yeah, I mean, I, I love that scene. I love that she is willing to be extend an olive branch, be nice, be generous up to a point. Yeah. Um, but then she's fierce and defend defends her family, and I loved that about her. Joy, do you know yeah. what I remember about filming that scene? What it was one of the first times I remember you saying, we need to have a conversation about this because you were upset that Nathan wasn't backing Haley up 
while we were filming, you were like, how come Nathan doesn't say like anything to his mother? And I remember thinking like, yes. Interesting. I, you don't remember that? You were like, no. you were like, he's really just going to stand there and make and just like watch. <laughs> that sounds like while me. his mother is like berating <laughs> his new wife. Like that is gross. And I remember thinking, yeah, girl, why do they make us do all the work? Why do they do that? <laughs> and I was so happy that you said that. And I don't know that you necessarily won that fight. And I think, you know, Haley looks strong in this episode yeah. standing up for herself. Yeah. But I also really value that you were like, no. It's not on me to put your mother into her place. This is a you yeah. situation. So for all of you at home. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I remember that fight and I liked it. <laughs> I love that. It would have been nice, actually. And that could have easily been done. They could have mm -hmm. shot a quick glance where I look at Nathan and he doesn't do anything. And then I'm like, OK, and then I jump in <laughs> or and then they have a fight about it later. Or they could have shot a moment where Nathan starts to talk and I put just touch him with my hand and I'm like, I'd like to address this. Yeah. And then I handle it. But just something to where Nathan not just standing there like a putz. But, you know, they're teenagers. They I mean, he yeah. is a boy. And we Ugh. we he's said that during the episode, you know, Deb's like, he's not a man. He's a boy. Right. And that was mm -hmm. probably the truest yeah. line for me in this mm, little narrative. Yes. Because as the mother of a boy, no one better touch him ever, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> They'll ruin his life. You're going to ruin him. Um, I thought Barb was handling all that really well, by the way, because it was nice to see after how much we talked about in the first season, how much she had everything together mm -hmm. and was handling everything. And it was starting to spin out toward the end of season one. But she was such a, a beacon of uh, a woman with her shit together yeah. uh, in the first season. So to see everything kind of spinning out and really seeing all the cracks start to show, I really liked that. And I thought Barb, as an actress, handled that really well. It was yeah. nice to see that. Yeah. And it, and it is really nice, too. I, I do think that um, her reaction grounds the experience and it also enables everyone else's joy. Like if everyone was just happy about it, it wouldn't have felt as, as real or high stakes, I think. And her uh, yeah, being the character who struggled with it enabled, you know, Haley's parents to then be these supporters. And oh my God, Huey Lewis <sighs> giving that speech at the end about, mm -hmm. you know, you can drive at 16, go to war at 18, drink at 21. And he goes on and on and on. You know, how old do you have to be before your love is real? And I was just like, oh, what a sweet dad. And, yeah. you know, if Deb hadn't have had a terrible reaction, then that wouldn't have, maybe it wouldn't have been necessary, but it might not have felt as meaningful either. I loved Bess Armstrong and Huey Lewis in this oh, episode yeah. so much. Them snuggling with her with Haley on her bed when she comes home. Yeah. Um, great parenting advice. I uh, loved the the way that they cuddled and snuggled and were like, We are here for you, but also you're you chose this and you gotta fly the fly the coop. You're you're done with being the baby now. Mm -hmm. Um we really see where Haley got her ability to set great boundaries. Yeah. Uh, which I loved. And mm -hmm. I I just they're so cool. They're yeah. like, those are the kind of parents I want to be. And by the way, Bess is someone who I've stayed in touch with and who I've had Aww. lunches and dinners with. And um, she is such a generous, kind, open-hearted, smart woman. Like, couldn't ask for a better TV mom. It's somebody you can just get advice from and who's been through a lot in her own life and has seen mm. all angles of this business. And... Um, <laughs> I just love her. We love you, Bess. Yeah, Bess, yeah. come on the show. Come give us some Please advice. Please join Please. us. Please. We think you're a babe. They were great wish fulfillment parents. After seeing all these kids with either broken homes or no parents at all, um, to see that and to be able to just kind of like feel warm in it, it was so nice. And it made the end of the episode really painful to know that it's not going to stick around. When they announce that they're leaving, oh, I know. it feels like a cheat. It's like, oh, we just got yeah. this really comfortable sweater and now we have to take it back? Like, I know. Blech. Um, Huey Lewis, 
by the way. So I got this T-shirt in third grade, a Huey Lewis and the News T-shirt. It was the Sports Pages <gasps> album. <laughs> and I wore that yeah, thing yeah. till it was see-through. I mean, absolutely see-through. You did. And I brought it to set while we were filming this episode. And he, I was like, I feel like such a nerd, but will you sign my T-shirt? I've had it since I was eight. And he, he was like, I'm going to teach you a trick real fast. And he, he somehow like, held the t-shirt so it would be like super flat and tight so he could sign it and he's like this is an old tour trick and it was just such a cool thing to see him go back into like lead singer mode you know to like go from dad mode to like i'm a rock I star love it. so cool he's a cool dude real fun um man yeah what a babe what an amazing amazing opportunities our job affords us these strange <laughs> moments of with heroes with heroes yeah. yes it's really cool. Well, to see him it do the fake really ID, cool. Brooke set up a good party. Let's talk about Brooke's party tricks. Oh, Walk us through they them. They were sweet. They were very sweet. Okay, what did we do? Elevator, the elevator thing. Oh, my God. I loved my first, my first and favorite thing of the night, actually, was the board that Peyton did with Nathan and Haley's baby photos. That's super cute. Loved that. That, that just killed me. And there was something so sweet about... Having those photos on that board and then the big photos of the two of them from the wedding on the stage. Mm -hmm. And you sort of see the the motion of a life yeah. and these people. And uh, I just loved it. But yeah, Brooke's party tricks. Brooke and Peyton threw a good party. Let's let's actually clarify that. Peyton just made the mixtape, baby. <laughs> you know what? We, we did good. We did good. But I loved like temporary tattoo stations with Naley forever. And I loved... You know, everyone make your elevator list. And then if you if you have it in common, this is what's so funny. There is no Brooke is like, again, the men who wrote our show wrote this episode where Brooke is essentially violating Peyton's consent. Oh, my God. For the entire episode <laughs> taking these horrible the pictures episode. of her. It, it's such a terrible so model. It's the worst. And then weirdly models a really good consent rule for a hookup. And is like you're only allowed to hook up with someone if you each have each other on your list. And I was like, yeah, what is this? Like, we're in, we're out, we're in, yeah. we're out. Like, what is this? <laughs> we were still <laughs> figuring it out. Early 2000s it's, were dicey, man. <laughs> we were still figuring it out. Dicey. But, but, you know, I will say, uh, you want to kiss somebody in the elevator who wants to kiss you, I still stand by it. Have a good time. Hey, hey. This spin the body was actually really cute. Wait, level five, the level five elevator that would always get stuck was... Yep. Ground zero for lots of debauchery in town. Did you ever kiss anybody in that elevator? <laughs> really? I don't think I did. I didn't know that. Oh my God, that elevator would get stuck all the time. And you just be yeah, in there. It did? I've Honestly, I think the only person I ever got stuck in that elevator with was you. So that's a missed opportunity. But. God, <laughs> Sophia, what could have been? <laughs> but guys, it was a big freight elevator. It was the elevator that they brought all the equipment up on. So they would load all the camera equipment, the lights and everything up on this freight elevator and then, and then you know, buzz it up to the second floor. But yeah, I didn't know it was elevator. always, yeah, the trick elevator. No, Hillary's talking about the elevator at level five downtown when we'd go to <gasps> oh, see comedy. Level five. Yeah, baby, we had oh. five levels to get stuck. Oh, that elevator was really tiny. That mm -hmm. was a scary elevator, but also apparently a sexy one. So, <laughs> sex elevator. <laughs> um, I will say, I did, I agree with you, Joy. I love Spin the Body. I think that's actually very cute. Yeah, so and, cute. And how cute is Mouth? He's oh, yes, I yes, no, it. no, yes, yes. <laughs> he's Love he's 10. so sweet, and everyone's telling everyone who their elevator list is, and he says Brooke, and it's like they love each other so much that it's just a cute moment with them. It doesn't make it weird. It doesn't make it sexy. Yeah. It doesn't. No one's annoyed. I I I just keep coming back to like, man, this episode feels carbonated, like it's bubbly and alive. Well, we had the River Court boys I love back. It. You yeah. know, I was just going to say that finally we got Vaughn, Ugh. we got uh, skills when back. When Vaughn ate spray cheese off of <laughs> Antoine's shoulder, <laughs> I was like, that's the best thing anyone's ever done on our show. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah, they add so much to it. And to see all like the basketball players at the party, to see our cheerleading friends dancing, like Bevan yeah. being totally Bevin better. Bevan and, and Daniela. And, oh, so She's fun. a good dancer. She's, yeah. she's a good party girl, Bev. Yeah. I think she's still got it, too. So this anniversary party is going to be freaking off the chain. Um, oh, my God. Whitey showing up at the party was very oh. sweet. 
um, yeah. and bringing a baby gift, which so inappropriate. Oh my God. So, <laughs> honestly though, I was like, see, look, it's not just Brooke who thinks. <laughs> well, but by the way, you did a very good job of when you realized that the yeah. joy's really not pregnant. Haley's not pregnant of kind of that realization like, oh, people actually just love each other and don't get, you know, sideswiped into mm -hmm. situations. That's crazy. Yeah. Really nice moment. I loved yeah. that moment between us. Yeah, because Haley's Haley's trying to like make something make sense to Brooke. Mm -hmm. And Brooke is realizing that there doesn't have to be a device or a gimmick. And she's never had that modeled for her. And that's certainly not, you know, what she went through with Lucas and Peyton and that letter that they wrote. And so it's, it's, it's such a yeah. short scene between us, but it's really, really touching. You guys were both really good at this, um, keeping the, 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 there was always, no matter what was going on, you know, with Peyton, it was the, the tough, hard, wry exterior with Brooke. It was the bubbly excitement, pushing the buttons exterior, but you always kept the fragility of the little girl mm -hmm. and what these, the, even as you were women. And when we jumped ahead four years, both of you are always really good at being able to switch those moments from whatever the facade was into the real vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one of the things that made your character so interesting, that that you just never knew at any moment that fragility could pop up to the surface. Well, Joy, you're good at that, too. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Yeah, you are. Oh, thanks. Your lone <laughs> tear in this episode during Huey Lewis's oh. toast was like the killer. <laughs> That was the killer. Yeah. But don't you guys feel like that in real life? Like, honestly, yes. I, I don't yeah. know what's going on. I was just thinking that. I've got an 11-year-old son, and I have, I, I've been having all these conversations with him. And there are some times where I feel like we're the same age. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. on the inside, I still feel like I'm a middle schooler. And so... I do, too. Yeah. That little girl thing still pops up in real life. Yeah, I mean, mm, I sure. think I think that's the reality for so many of us is, you know, you get older and you start to learn like what, what all the sort of teenagers and younger versions of yourself that you still carry are. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, wow. I kind of, I have to parent all these versions of myself so I can yeah. be an adult. And so I can be a real parent. And so, you know, the list goes on and yeah, I feel that I still sometimes sit and go, into that young girl who goes, is it me? Did uh, what I do? Am I the one who's not supposed to be here? Am I in trouble? <laughs> like, whoa. And I do. I think that's that. I don't know that piece of us that maybe we carry forever. Well, the secret of the universe is that the grownups don't know the answers. And Karen says yeah. that. <laughs> Karen says, "I have no roadmap for you, Lucas." I, loved I that. love that I moment. Loved that. I'm figuring it out myself, and I think that's where I'm at yeah. in my life right now. I'm just like. There's no map. Like, what are we doing? Nope. I mean, we have all these paths of people who have gone before us where you you and you find patterns where you're like, okay, eventually A plus B plus C is gonna equal X. And so we we know that pretty much no matter who you are, where you are in life, if you go down these roads, it's not gonna lead to something great. Or if you go down these other roads, this is the pattern of success for a lot of hugs, other not drugs, is what you're saying. So, <laughs> hey, you know what? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Just say no. Yeah. But um, unless it's mushrooms, but we'll get back to that later. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, th there is no roadmap for you. No. I mean, there's a, there's a general sense of like, here's the direction. If you if you go east, you're gonna go east but there's no specific like mm -hmm. there's a compass know, not a map figuring it out we've got a compass it's a compass not a map there you go yeah, wah, wah. I like that. do we want to answer some questions yeah actually i love this tiana asked and and <laughs> this does feel incredibly appropriate given today's chat Oof. would you react more like dan and deb or like Haley's parents if your child told you they wanted to get married at a young age oh this is my worst nightmare yeah which which kid unless i really liked the kid yeah, yeah. which one of my kids which kid? 
Because here's the deal. If someone thinks they can it. handle my daughter, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell everybody, I'm like, she is the greatest weapon I've ever created in my life. Like, she is payback for everything because she is so strong and so <laughs> ferocious. So if someone thinks they can handle George Morgan, good luck. Um, hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I would definitely be best in that situation. But I totally understand, Deb. A hundred percent. Like, yeah, my son yeah, is too. such a sensitive animal. And I'm sure she had those moments with Nathan when he was a little boy, you know, yeah. and that's what she's she's not seen older Nathan. She's seen baby Nathan, the kid she was looking at in that picture. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I think about that like uh, the first thing that comes to mind is anxiety. And the second <laughs> thing that comes to mind is me thinking, well, your prefrontal cortex isn't done developing until you're 26. <laughs> so no, you have to wait until right. you're at least 26. Take it from those of us who were idiots in our early 20s. <laughs> just wait until you're 26. Like, come on. What do you want a ring? I got a ring. You can have this ring. What do you want? Like, I'll send you somewhere on a trip. I don't know. You know, it, it gives me a lot of anxiety. But then, and I think yeah. I told this story last week. Like, I look at my my sweet cousin and- She's blissfully happy. And, yeah. you know, they got married in their early 20s. So I, all I know is that I don't know. Joy, I mean, when, Maria when comes. you look at Romeo and Juliet, Oof. I mean, you know, their parents were, were totally disapproving and they did teenagers do what they want to do. They oh, find gosh. a way. So I think that's where it comes into knowing your kid and knowing what your limits are with their independence and where, you know, at what point do you know that they're going to need an ally? Mm -hmm more than they need um, your strong word or your discipline. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I mean, my, knowing my kid, I probably would come in real strong, but uh, just to like to be really clear about how I feel, but then I would also have to come around because I don't want her like just running off and disappear. You know, at the, at the end of the yeah. day, if she's going to choose what she's going to choose, she's going to need my help. She's going to need me to be an ally for her as things progress. Can we just make like yeah, a pact that's... right now that if that happens to any of us, like we just run to Joy's house and let her make us a very stiff drink or like Absolutely. if it's if it's you, we'll just <laughs> yes. run to you and just bring all the liquor. You're in charge. <laughs> I'm all the liquor. It. Bring it all. Um, Alicia asks, how did you prepare for the scenes where you had to show emotion and cry? And also, does it take a while to come out of the deep emotion afterwards? Mm. You guys have anything to say? I mean, I I don't. I just I just cry. I don't know. I I yeah. it, it, it's kind of what we were talking about before, where the the fragility of life and the things that um the groundedness of the things that you feel the weight of as a human throughout your day or your mm -hmm. life that you just carry those with you, and um, that's. I, the gift of a storyteller, I guess, we're able to access those points and release them uh, upon command, generally. <laughs> just... Well, yeah, Sophia and I are both cancers. We cry all the time, you know? <laughs> cancers are just, like, super emotional people. I didn't think that my body was keeping score of all the crying that I was doing on One Tree Hill. And Cheryl Lee who plays Ellie later in the show warned me about this. She was like, mm. you're really? Yes. She was like, your brain knows that it's bullshit. Your body doesn't. And she's like, and you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff on this show, you know? And we hadn't even hit peak crazy yet. Um, and yeah, it's like my body, my sense memories of being on the show is our trauma because there was just yeah. like, Tears and tears and tears and, a, mm. you know, your body releases chemicals. Your brain releases chemicals when yeah. you're going through all of that. So I tried yeah. to counter it by being super fun party girl outside of work. I think I was just really tired all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. You can only yeah. stay up till two in the morning so many nights in a row um, mm -hmm. before all the yeah, for sure. all it catches up. Yeah. 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 It is a really interesting thing to understand the, the kind of physiology of your body and the toll that this work takes. You know, people think being an actor is glamorous and it's it's a lot of physical work and oftentimes a lot of emotional torture. And we love it because we love yeah. to tell stories. I mean, you said it, Joy, we we are storytellers. It It is it is who we are. You you are or you're not. 
And, yeah. and for me, I think, you know, when I was younger and, and had a lot more anxiety about being able to perform on command, being a good girl, doing the good job, mm-hmm. it, it, that would be the thing that would kind of impede me. So I would try to take time. I like to make playlists for different projects and I'd, I'd try to like get away from the noise, you know, the joking on set, like put some headphones in, like be in a space and it's interesting because I think as I've gotten older and been to more therapy and unpacked just more things and given myself more permission to feel how I feel rather than how I think everyone else in the room expects me to feel mm-hmm. or behave all the time, it's much yeah. easier to let, caveat with good writing, to <laughs> let the writing take me to the place Because good writing, you have, to your point, you know, whether it's cancerian or just it comes from empathy, you have a response to it because it feels really grounded in something real. Mm -hmm. And, And yeah, I think the thing I'm still trying to figure out is, is how do you process the after effects? How do you get that stuff out of your body? You know, animals in the wild go through trauma and then they lay on the ground and they shake really violently for like 10 or 15 minutes. And then they get up and they hop or run away. Oh, that's an option. Yeah, (sighs) like humans don't do that. So how do we get it out Mm. of us? I I think this is probably why I was like the healthiest when I was also like dancing regularly when I was in the classes and stuff. But, you know, like on my last job, to your point, Hillary, like I was in Peyton world. It was like trauma, sadness, death, murder, violence, crying all the time. Yeah. And I couldn't. I couldn't talk to people. I couldn't be touched by strangers. Somebody grabbed me once on the street, like grabbed me by the back of the arm, not meaning to be creepy, but like I turned around and elbowed a guy almost in the face. Oh, like it was such a knee jerk reaction. Did he still want a picture? (laughs) And and he was like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I mean, he was at least a wise enough person to be like, I I really shouldn't have done that. Uh But it took me a long time to get that stuff out of my body. And yeah. so, mm. yeah, I don't know. I'm like, listeners at home, do you have any any tips for movement medicine for us gals? Anything we can share with the rest of the audience? We're just going to have to dance it off. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that I'm ready for. Dance it off, baby. Um, we're going to Joyce. Yeah. We're bringing the booze. We're having God a dance. Bless. Whether any of our children want to get that's married it. early or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that's why we appreciate these kinds of episodes where there is a lot of joy. Like we're having like yeah. a ton of fun yeah. in these episodes because we know yeah. we know that they were pleasant to film. Um, yeah. And we had a good time. So thanks for those questions. Great. Y'all want to spin a thanks, wheel? Thanks, guys. I think we should. Spin a wheel. Where's that wheel? Come on now. Most likely to get it. What do we got? Ooh. Ooh. Move to a foreign country. Who's most likely to most move likely to a foreign country? Well, Karen moved country. to Italy. And then didn't she go yeah. to Australia? Karen, yeah. Yeah, with, uh, with, with Kieran. Andy. What was his name? Andy. Hot Andy. Yeah, yeah. Hot Andy. He was. Do that accent again, Joy. On my Australian accent. <laughs> well... It's not right. No, I can't do it when I'm when I, I'm. Hold on, blah, 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 I'm doing British. No, it's so easy. I know. To I'm to going to sour cream. Try. You go to get some coffee in the sour cream, and <laughs> uh, you know, I've got these Christmas cookies. But you can't can't really enjoy Christmas in the heat, can you? <laughs> oh I mean, maybe God. you can. I've never been to Australia in the in the, <laughs> summer, in the winter. In the winter, that's a sexy. It's accent, not very good. Joy. It's all right. No, I'd still kiss you. I like it. <laughs> it's really close. I like it a lot. Joy, I would say you're the person in real life. Who would move to a foreign... Like, I can see you going to live in Austria. Yeah. You know, going to live in France, like wherever. You were learning Italian, weren't you? French. Mm-hmm. I was learning. I have. I know a little Italian, but yeah, I um, I love languages and I'm, I love I love just different cultures. I'm so interested in the way other people live and too. how they interact with each other and the earth and spirituality say, and yeah. food and wine. Guys, and, I almost didn't come back from Italy this summer. I was like, I don't think I need <laughs> I to go. I believe it. I yep. think I should just stay. I believe it. But you had the most magical trip ever. Like you had like a fairy tale. <laughs> it was great. But it's like, you know, my so much of my family's there. And I was just like, I don't know, man. Maybe we should just do this. Maybe I'll like make cheese. If there's a soap opera in Italy that wants to hire the three of us. Ooh. Oh my God, I would love call that. Call us. 
Let's go. Yeah. I just want to <laughs> want to wear cool outfits and all black and, you know. Somebody send us on a drink coffee all day. European tour. Yeah, I want to drink coffee all day and wine all night mm, and eat bless. pasta. You guys, this was a fun episode. I love your faces. So if I want you to go to sleep and get some rest. Love you too. Enjoy. I want in my you to enjoy being home. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy to be home. You know who's coming over today who I've never met before? Who? Oh. Kimbra. What? Oh, she's you know such a big singer. She's Kimbra? the best. Please give her a hug for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know her, but you can hug her for me too. Oh, I've known her for no. a long time. She's an angel. And uh, you have? Yeah, for years. Yeah, we, um, oh God, I think we met the summer I turned 30. She's the best best she's really good friends with kenny oh who oh, directed our kenny? music video yeah he directed yeah. our video one of my best best friends and she is a huge one tree health fan sweet that's so cool she's i love that I, she's brilliant i mean i've been a huge fan of her music for many many years she is a savant, many years like a true truly genius. truly yeah. a genius oh i'm so excited yeah. about this please write us a song yeah <laughs> do it she needs to finish our theme song. That's what she got. She's oh, the perfect, perfect person, actually. All right. right? That's how we're going to kick off yeah. the new year. Well, we hope everybody's uh, getting ready for the holiday season and having a merry, merry time. And uh, don't don't work too hard, you know? Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of the holidays. And we'll see you back here next week for season two, episode three, Near Wild Heaven. Bye. 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 Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See, See you, you next, next time. time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl. cheering for the right team. Drama queen. 